We're getting an R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Live action. R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know whether this is good or bad. Walter Hamada's involved. He's not great. He's one of the major negatives. Um, I don't know really. Genuinely, I don't. I don't really know what to think of this. So this news came out yesterday, pretty late yesterday, and I'm still like I'm looking at it, and I am in kind of disbelief. Like on on paper, this is a good deal, right? Or at least conceptually, because this is for the adults that grew up with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is this is for them. But then there's like bad, bad ingredients in this recipe. And I don't know if there's a market for it. But I would be kind of hypocritical if I was to dismiss it offhand. Because ultimately I've been saying that they need to do things like this for a while. I don't know. I don't know if this will be good or not. And I don't know if it will do well. But, as ever, I will bring the news and I will ask you. Do you think this will be good? Let me know down below. So, as a Hollywood Reporter notes, an exclusive to them, a live-action R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie is in the works from producer Walter Hamada. Now, it's said to be, it is said to be the last Ronin, which would make sense as an R-rated property. That would make sense. So after the six, this doesn't even make any sense, writing this in the article. After the success of last year's animated hit film, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. So, if that was successful, why would you go back and do the complete opposite then? I mean, it was successful, but why would you do the opposite? This is why it doesn't make any sense to me. And again, I'm not poo-pooing it, but writing that in the article is a dumb thing to put. Because it wasn't the adults that made that successful. And only adults can watch this, so a bit of a weird thing to say. But Paramount Pictures is keeping the turtle power going by putting a new feature project into development. This one, however, will go beyond the realm of all ages material. The long-standing property is known for and instead go into gritty, gritty R-rated territory. So Paramount is developing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin, adapting a popular storyline seen in the recent IDW comics as a live-action feature with the intent of making it for an R rating, so they're going out. They're going out with the with the the express intention of making it R rated. Which, yeah, is surprising because a lot of companies don't, they don't do this. Is this Paramount's version of the Joker? I guess. And what I mean by like, I don't mean the Joker, but I mean, is this Paramount's version of making an R rated hit? Because the Joker was an R rated hit over a billion dollars. Could be. Very surprising. So who's on board? Tyler Burton Smith, who co-wrote the upcoming R-rated action. Uh, it's an action. It's an, an R-rated action comedy movie, Boy Kills World, um, and that's with Scott, one of the Scars guards. That does actually look good, to be honest. It looks it looks quite funny, but that's not something which I would then go cool. That's it. This is the guy to make the last Ronin. Although I guess there, there would be a, there would be an era of comedy, wouldn't there? Actually, in fairness, it's the, it's the the mutant ninja turtle, so there would be an era uh, an era of comedy. So that's not it's not entirely out of the question, actually, of him being a good fit. Uh, but he also co-wrote, or sorry, wrote the 2019 iteration of Chucky horror franchise Child's Play in penning that script. So that was the movie. That was the Mark Hamill movie. If anyone remembers that, where it was like a computerized doll technology Chucky. So now Walter Hamada is producing through his 18 Hertz production company as part of his multi-year deal with the studio. Hamada is the former head of DC Films. Yeah. Who rose through the ranks at New Line, where he oversaw the Warner Brothers division's horror movies, including the Conjuring and It franchises. But the thing is, he may he may have oversaw he may have overseen those franchises, but he didn't produce them. He didn't get them on board. Roy Lee uh, is very involved in the It franchise of, of Vertigo, so 
Walter Hamada is kind of a nothing in that element, if that makes sense. He might have overseen it, but he didn't make them. If, he, if he's producing it, you're going to have to have more on your repertoire to make people excited. But anyway, his 18 hertz banner is focused on making features in the horror genre. Which, you know what? It, ma it makes sense to do that. It makes sense to do horrors at the moment. They're cheaper to make. Um, you know, not that this will be cheap, but horrors are cheaper to make, generally speaking. And they, not, they have a good success rate for profit. Uh, so anyway, Last Ronin is about as terrifying as a turtle's tail can get. Set in a totalitarian future New York City. This is a great comic, by the way. The comic miniseries told of how the turtles and Master Splinter are killed off one by one by the grandson of Shredder and synthetic ninjas. So one turtle manages to survive barely and vows to exact bloody vengeance. One trick of the book was that it wasn't clear for a while at least which one of the turtles lived as the survivor had the weapons of all four, which is really cool. So co-creator Kevin Eastman, Tom Waltz, wrote the comic based on an older story of Eastman and co-creator Peter Laird's artists include Isao and Isaac Escorza, uh, Ben Bishop and Eastman, IDW, the publisher that holds the license for the Ninja Turtles comics, put out the books between 2020 and 2022, and the comics were an unexpected massive hit, with the collected trade paperback being the second highest selling graphic novel of 2023 per Sakana book scan. It was huge. Uh, the comic book company recently released the sequel TMNT The Last Ronin 2 Re-Evolution with a debut issue touted as being one of the biggest comics of the year with more than 140,000 copies ordered. So Ninja, this is like what's saving actual comics, right? You know, not in indie comics. Um, I am just really surprised. It says this over the years, more animated series. I just don't get the mindset I mean, I'm glad that they're moving away from anything from Seth Rogen. But it is interesting. What a surprise. What a weird... What a weird thing to go and do next. I'm not against it. I just don't know whether there's a market for it. And whether Walter Hamada is the, the weakest link that could damage it. What do you guys think? They'd have to, they have to do it well. I wouldn't even be averse to something black and white, actually, for this. You could do that. It could work. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Genuinely love to hear your thoughts. So drop them down below. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.